Welcome friends. In this video, I'm going to take you through science paper 2 for the year 2023 and uh, we are going to look at section C. So let's have the first question here. The first question, the scale in keto contains calcium carbonate and amino sulfonic acid which is used to remove this scale. This acid reacts with the scale and produces a salt. Then question A, the apparatus in figure C 1.1 was used to collect the gas formed when the excess acid was added to small amounts of the scale. Okay, now if you look at uh, this illustration, it's telling us uh, the reaction between the calcium carbonate and this particular acid, which is amino sulfonic acid. So it doesn't matter the term or the, uh, the term that is being used uh, to describe a, uh, a certain acid. So the whole thing is uh, the reaction between it. Uh, uh, a metal carbonate. A metal carbonate is uh, a compound in which there is a metal and the carbonate. So now, if you look at the first question, Roman number one, how could you tell that a gas is being produced? Now, before we look at this question, first let's go back to uh, the reaction. So the we have a metal carbonate, which is calcium carbonate. Then this is reacting with amino sulfonic acid. Now, if you look at the reaction between any metal carbonate with any acid, what are the products that we are expected to have? And this is one of the characteristics of an acid. So whenever an acid reacts with a, a metal carbonate, we are going to have a salt, of which we are told a salt was produced. So we have a salt. Then we need to have water. As one of the product then the gas produced in that particular reaction is carbon dioxide now we are not yet looking at the type of the gas that was produced but the question is how can you tell uh, that a gas is being produced so it's because of the bubbles were produced so these bubbles were an indication that the gas uh, is being produced so say because the bubbles were produced. Okay, so we move on to Roman number two and three. Roman number two, name the gas produced. So the gas produced is carbon dioxide now how did we know that this is carbon dioxide so for you to know the type of the gas producing you need to look at the reaction or the reactant so whenever a metal carbonate react with any acid the gas produces always carbon dioxide so that is what should help you to identify the gas then for roma number three describe a chemical test for the gas produced so this question is the same as it. we need to describe the chemical test for carbon dioxide. So we say it turns lime water, new key. So question B, Elena measured the total volume of gas produced over 120 seconds. His results are shown in the table. So here on top we have time in seconds, 0 up to 120 seconds. Then in, uh, below we have total volume from 0 up to 65 cubic centimeters. Now the first question is plot a graph of the results, which is volume against time. So let's draw uh, x, y plane. Okay, so now here. We are, we know that the vertical line is our y axis, then this is our x axis. We need to have the origin here. We need to make the scale since in science we are not given a scale. So uh, let's look at uh, the time. So time it's from 0 up to 120. So if you look at the graph paper, uh, we can't use the scale of 2 centimeters to represent 10 units, it won't fit on that particular graph paper so we can make and uh, please i as you are studying please make sure you use the actual graph paper for you to have uh, the clear picture now let's look at see how we can take advantage of this so we are going to use the two scale 
uh, 2 centimeters to represent 20 units. So 20 here, 40 here, 60, 80, 100, 120. Remember, in x axis, we have time in seconds. So the reason why we've ended at 120, that is our last number in, in the x axis. Then in y axis, we are going to have volume in cubic centimeters. So which scale can we use? So if you're using the actual graph paper, uh, you can use the scale of 2 centimeters to represent 10. As long as you are able to, to reach the highest number is, uh, if you look at the numbers, the highest is 75. So at least if you are able to reach um, 80, then we are okay. So we have 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, somewhere here. So now let's see the first one, 0, 0. The second one is 5, 20. So 5, 20, somewhere here. Then 20, 40, 20, 40, somewhere here. Then the next one, we have 35, 35 comma 35 comma 50 which is somewhere here then we have 55 55 comma 60 somewhere here then we have 70 comma 75 somewhere here then 80 we have 80 no we have 90 90 comma 65 so so 70 comma 75 is somewhere here then we have 90 comma 65 65 somewhere here then 120 comma 65 somewhere here So 90 comma 65 somewhere here, 120 comma 65. So our graph is moving in this particular uh, manner. So that is our graph. So for you, if you are using the actual graph paper, you will be able to get the clear picture. Okay, so now we move on to Roma number two. Circle the point which seems to be incorrect. So I know after seeing this point here, you thought maybe we, I person, maybe I made a mistake. No. So there uh, was a reason why they, they included this point. Because we have this question where they want us to circle the point which we, uh, which seems to be incorrect. So the point is this one. Because we can see that uh, under normal circumstances, the curve was supposed to move in this direction. Okay. Then we have another question. Calculate the average rate of the reaction. So first, let's look at the rate. Rate for this question will be change in volume divided by change in time. So I'm going to get. Uh, I'm, I'm going to find at least three rates. So the first one, I'm going to use this one. So for this one, the volume is forty. Uh, cubic centimeters divided by 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 the time is 20 seconds so if you do mathematics here this will give us two uh, cubic centimeters per second so this means that per one second two cubic centimeters of hydrogen was produced then the second one so rate is equal to change in volume divided by change in time so here uh, for this one i'm going to use this one so the volume is 60 divided by 55 so if you do mathematics 60 divided by 55 you get 1.090 which is 1.1 cubic centimeters per second then the third one the third one, I'm going to use this since 
this point shows that the reaction has stopped. So the last point where the reaction stopped was 90 and 65. So we'll say 65 divided by 90. So 65 divided by 90, I'm getting 0 0.7. 0 0.7 cubic centimeters per second. Now, before we proceed with our calculations, let's look at uh, at this point. Uh, at this point where there is a uh, should be 20 comma 40. So 20 comma 40, the rate of reaction is 2 cubic centimeters per second. Then at uh, uh, 60 comma uh, 55 55 comma 65 55 comma 65 which is somewhere here the rate of reaction was 1.1 so we can see that as the reaction is proceeding the speed of it i mean the rate of a chemical reaction started to decrease until at one point it stopped now after we have at least these calculations how can we find the average so the average we can find it like this. So we are going to add this plus this plus this. So we'll say 2 plus 1.1 plus 0 0.7 divided by 3. The reason why we are dividing by, by 3 because we have calculated three rates of chemical reaction. So 2 plus 1.1 plus 0 0.7 will give me 3.8 over 3 so divided by 3 I'm getting 1.3 uh, cubic centimeters per second so this is our average now the other questions that we may expect uh, from a question like this one uh, questions like how can you tell from the curve that the reaction has stopped so you can only tell whenever the curve starts to move parallel to the x-axis and uh, from the table if you can see that at this point the volume of the gas was 65 even here is CO 65 so those two numbers shows that the volume of hydrogen has stopped or meaning carbon dioxide has stopped uh, being produced Meaning there is no reaction, there is no continuous production of what uh, of carbon dioxide. Then the other questions that you may expect here is <coughs> maybe giving the factors that can make the reaction to be fast. Okay, we move on to question two. Zinc blend is one of the rules of zinc metal. State the chemical name of zinc blend. So this is all about extraction of zinc. So zinc blending is chemically known as zinc sulfide. Which is by chemical symbols, it is this. Then for question B, describe how zinc metal is extracted from zinc blend. Include the necessary balanced chemical equations. So what is the first step? So let's look at the first step for this level, for grade 12 level. We are just going to focus on it, grade 12 level. So the first step is that the zinc sulfide, sulfide must be roasted in air to produce zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. So the zinc sulfide must be roasted in air to form zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide that's why one negative of extraction of zinc is that it produces sulfur dioxide which is an acidic gas an acidic gas is a gas that can dissolve in the atmospheric the vapor in the atmosphere to produce the acidic rain now let's have the first equation so the first equation is 
zinc sulfide zinc sulfide plus oxygen so whenever you have roasted or roasting it's a reaction with oxygen then we are going to have zinc oxide plus sulfur dioxide so the importance of this step is to remove sulfur dioxide so we want to convert this metal sulfide into metal oxide so the chemical symbol we have zinc sulfide solid plus oxygen the atomic it's a gas then you are going to have zinc oxide plus sulfur dioxide now we are told that we need to make sure that our equation is but so we need to check is our equation balanced no the equation is not balanced so let's uh, look at uh, here there is one atom of zinc one atom of zinc zinc is balanced one atom of sulfur sulfur then uh, if you look at uh, here we have two atoms of oxygen then uh, one plus two give us three atoms so oxygen is uh, not balanced so how can we balance it let's put uh, two uh, let's put two in front of zinc sulfide also here zinc sulfide so we have two atoms of zinc two atoms of zinc let's also put two here so that we have two atoms of sulfur two atoms of sulfur so the best way to picture this whenever we put a number in front is same as if you look at x plus x is giving us 2x so the two is affecting everything so now let's say if maybe i can give you a picture so if you have zinc sulfide plus another zinc sulfide you get two zinc sulfide so whenever there is a two it means they are of two these compounds so that's a point or we can see that the number in front is affecting everything that is found in that particular compound so zinc is balanced sulfur is balanced now let's look at uh, oxygen so from this there are two atoms of oxygen from this we can say it's two times two which is four so on the product side we have six atoms of oxygen then on the reactant side we only have two so we need a three where is this three coming from it's 60 divided by two okay so our equation is now balanced now let's move on to uh, step two so under step two now the zinc oxide the zinc oxide will be reduced to zinc by a reducing agent which is carbon so the importance of stage two is now the reduction we want to get rid of the oxygen from the zinc oxide so, and the if you are if the question comes like give the reducing agent during the extraction of zinc we have carbon here so here i'm just going to write we have zinc oxide plus carbon and uh, here you are going to have uh, zinc plus carbon monoxide okay so you may uh, encounter uh, i've seen where uh, some people may think whenever this react with this we are going to get carbon dioxide now if you have just researched more the byproduct the gas that is produced uh, in the step two is carbon monoxide and for this reaction it is a balancing chemical reaction question c state two uses of zinc number one we can say to make an alloy which is brass here now apart from forming this uh, the other one we can also say it is used in 
I mean to make pharmaceutical. Or we can just say it is used in pharmaceutical. Then also sometimes the zinc can be also be used to make electrical cables. Now we move on to question D. Suggest one environmental problem that is consequence of that is consequence of extraction of metals. So this is just the metals in general. So what are since we are just revising, let's see how many we can give here. So number one, we may have pollution. So I'll just say pollution. Uh, pollution includes the water pollution, uh, air pollution, even the land pollution. Then number two, we have land degradation. Then apart from this, we may have displacement of wildlife. So these are some of the negative impact of uh, extraction of metals in general. Okay, so we move on to question three. Ethane and ethene are both organic compounds. A, compare how they react, if at all, with oxygen. Okay, so for this one, I can just say both ethane and ethene react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water even energy is also produced So this is what we call complete combustion if the oxygen is in excess. So it doesn't matter whether they are alkanes, alkenes, uh, alkynes, alcohol. Whenever you are dealing with uh, combustion, the products uh, are carbon dioxide and water. Then for the second one, we are looking at hydrogen gas. So for hydrogen, we'll say ethane cannot react with hydrogen because it is saturated so this can can cannot undergo it is saturated cannot undergo hydrogenation since we only have single bonds wow well, Ethene can react with hydrogen to form ethane. And this reaction is known as hydrogenation. Now for Roman number two, write a chemical equation for any of the reaction in one or so here we have been given uh, the chance to make a choice. We can write the combustion or hydrogenation. So depends with the one. Now let's say, let's look at for combustion. So for combustion, let's say we want to use ethane plus C, oxygen. We are saying as long as it's a combustion, complete combustion, we are expecting to get carbon dioxide plus water so a thing is c2 h6 plus co2 is equal to co2 plus h2o then we can balance the chemical equation so how can we balance the chemical equation so two atoms of carbon on the reactant side so let's put a two here if we put a two here, we have um, two carbon, two carbon, what of hydrogen? So hydrogen, let's say we put three here, so that if we multiply by two, we are able to get six. 
Now, if we use this number, we are going to get for oxygen will be two times two, four plus three, which is seven. So here, this will give us an issue. So if that is the case, what are we supposed to do? We are going to put two here. Then we put four here so that we have four carbon, four carbon. Then if that is the case, we are going to put six here so that we know that two times uh, six, two times six will give us 12. Then six times two will give us 12. Now, four times two is eight. Eight plus six is 14. So we need to put a seven here so that seven times two, we have 14 atoms of uh, oxygen. So this is our complete combustion. Now, let's say we don't want to use this one. No? Let me see. Let's get rid of this. Okay, let's say we want to use hydrogenation. So if that is the case, we are going to use a thing where we have the suffix ene plus uh, hydrogen. So under hydrogenation, the double bond breaks. So it will change from an alkene to alkene which is we are going to form a thin. The chemical formula for a thin is C2H4 plus hydrogen diatomic. Then these two add on this one, giving us C2H6. So this is our chemical equation for hydrogenation and its balance. And if you want more of this, you can just see, look at some of the videos that contains organic chemistry, you will learn more of this. So that is what we can say for this one. We move on to question D. Draw the displayed structural formula of the first one, ethane. Now, let's say you don't know the chemical formula for ethane, but at least make sure you are able to remember the general formula, which is uh, Cn, H2n, uh, plus C2. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can divide the the name. So if we divide the name, the first one is the prefix. Prefix tells us the number of carbons. Then the last one is the suffix, which tells us the type of bond that we have. So F, if you look at the prefix, F, say, uh, it shows that there are two carbons. So where there is any, you put two. So if we do math, C times 2, we have a 2 here. 2 times 2, 4 plus 2, we have 6. So this is the chemical formula for ethane. Then the displayed structure, we are going to write the two carbons. Now make sure that under ethane with A and E, you need to put a single bond. That's why, that's what the suffix tells us. Whenever you see A and E, it should be single bonds between carbon atoms so we put the six hydrogen atoms on each remaining bond so we have our structure then we move on to this one the general formula for alkenes is cn h2n the same f is 2 so for this one is c2 h4 then you write the two carbons. Now under alkenes, remember at least to put a double bond between two carbon atoms. So the other remain bonds will be here, here. So this is where we're going to put the four atoms of hydrogen. Then uh, two, the last one, describe a chemical test that can be carried out to distinguish a than from a thin. So we can say by reacting a thin the one with e with bromine solution now what happens if this happens the bromine changes into a color so by reacting a thin with bromine solution and will produce a colorless 
solution so this is what we call decarization so whenever you react an alkene with bromine the bromine the color of bromine changes into a color so that's it for this video thanks for watching